time falling. Where? Well, it's a black hole. So, nowhere. It's the end of space-time, at least according to Einstein's general relativity. If we follow the principles of general relativity, black holes look a little something like this. The fabric of space-time is mapped by grid lines called geodesics and null geodesics, the paths that objects in light respectively naturally take in space. When we arrive at events in space-time, these geodesics are warped, because space-time is distorted, creating what we know as gravitational pull. Now, in the instance of black holes past the point of no return, the event horizon, all paths are forced to converge, shrinking to a central point of infinite density and gravity called a singularity, where space and time effectively ends. But physics doesn't do very well with infinity. This description of singularity as infinity is accurate, however only consistent with general relativity, disregarding the effects of quantum mechanics since we can't actually shrink to infinity. The issue is that these two concepts that we're trying to combine are mathematically incompatible. On one end, we have infinite smallness, and on the other, we have a limit to how small we can actually get. So in order to accurately paint this picture on a quantum level and uncover the deep, dark secrets of what the black hole is hiding, we have to merge these two in a theory of everything. Enter loop quantum gravity. In this theory, space is quantized, made up of discrete quanta at its most minimized level, like the pixels on your screen, rather than being the empty background as suggested by general relativity. It means that all measurements of distance, area, volume, and time in space have minimum quantity, because of these quanta being the smallest in the universe, all the way down to Planck's size. As you may have guess these quanta take the form of intertwining loops. These loops make up a woven network called a spin network and the geometry of this spin network is what makes up space-time. There is our quantum mechanics portion. Individual takes of these loops is what makes up time and when these networks are displaced by mass and energy it's what we perceive as gravity. Sounds just like general relativity. So now that LQG gives us a framework that gives us space-time and gravity consistent with quantum mechanics and general relativity we could revisit our black hole problem. We now know that loops are the smallest unit in space-time therefore we solve the problem of a singularity. It doesn't really go to infinity then where does it go? Essentially, the black hole horizon shrinks down to Planck size, where it can shrink no further. The center then goes through quantum tunneling and turns into the horizon of a white hole. A white hole is essentially the polar opposite twin of a black hole, where objects get ejected out and can't return. Time is stretched and slowed when in a black hole, so to an outside observer, this process can take millions to billions of years. But the passage of time inside of it would seem completely normal. This essentially means that traveling through a black hole and into a white hole is a one-stop ticket to the future. There's also a theory that traveling at faster than light speeds would open up an Einstein-Rosenberg bridge to a parallel universe universe, or a wormhole. Now we don't have any empirical evidence suggesting the existence of white holes just yet, but we do have some viable possibilities. The transition of black to white hole when a black hole horizon shrinks is analogous to Hawking radiation, a phenomenon discovered by Stephen Hawking where the horizon of a black hole shrinks and emits radiation. Additionally, astrophysical phenomena with unknown sources such as higher energy cosmic rays and fast radio bursts could be due to light and particles being trapped in black holes in the early universe, and released presently through a white hole after going through the extremely long transition process. But until we take the deep dive into a black hole or arrive at a theory of everything, the compelling mathematics is, well, just mathematics. But when we do, things like time travel, wormholes, and parallel universes could very well become a reality. It's just up to us to seek them out. Thank you for watching.